What's up guys, Nintendo here once again, and it's time for another video. Uh, we're just going to do a collection video. I was going to go through my collection like one console at a time and show you guys all my games for them, and I only got as far as Game Boy Advance. Uh, but then Mr. Shogun Death was inspired from the Mega Retro Brothers. He was inspired and he showed off his PlayStation collection, and so I was going to actually follow up with my PlayStation collection, and then I'm actually going to tag a few people at the end of this video and uh, we'll see if they are willing to show off their PlayStation collection. But uh, I don't have a huge PlayStation collection, just warning you, it is not huge at all. I'm pretty darn picky, and uh, it's a lot of RPGs, uh, but some really, really good games and some really good not RPGs also. So uh, stick around and uh, check it out. All right, guys, so let's get this started. First, we're going to start off with my disc onlys, which uh, I've eliminated a few disc onlys and actually upgraded them to cased versions such as uh, Symphony of the Night recently and uh, yeah so I only have three disc onlys left but they're actually all three pretty good games first of all we have uh, Viewpoint and yes sorry about the flash but it kind of has to be this way it's the best way to show these games off it's the best lighting possible so I'll just try to angle them so you guys don't get the flash but anyways Viewpoint really cool isometric shooter and uh, there was a Genesis version though it's very very stripped down compared to the PlayStation version uh, really cool music very very difficult in my opinion but I suck at video games and then uh, the next one already a hard hitter <laughs> uh, got Castlevania Chronicles and, uh, yeah, really cool, like, kind of reimagining of the first Castlevania game, and just cool, cool game to own, cool game to play. Really on the lookout for a cased version of this, but they're going up in price quite a bit. And same thing with this one, definitely a hard one to come by. Uh, there we go, Brigandine, The Legend of Forsenna. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this game. Uh, I got Castlevania Chronicles and Brigandine for my buddy Jesse, and he really does not like Brigandine, and honestly, I can kind of see why. I put it in not that long ago, actually, and it's just not my favorite thing in the world so far, but, you know, I haven't really played it a whole lot, so we shall see. All right, moving on, we are going to go to Greatest Hits games. In alphabetical order, we've got Chrono Cross, and this is actually sealed. I got this from uh, the Square Enix sale, like, a year, maybe a year and a half ago, and it was like... Man, it was like 10 or 15 bucks for a sealed copy, so that's pretty darn cool. And then uh, I've been on the lookout for a Black Label version of this for a while, Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, but this copy's in great, great shape, and as long as I can play it, that's the thing that really counts. But yeah, hate those Greatest Hits labels. I think everybody does. Although I, <laughs> I've heard that there are a couple people out there that actually collect so much PlayStation that they're actually after the Greatest Hits also. Um, Legend of Dragoon, another one that I'm really after. All of these I'm after, black label copies, so if you have an extra one to trade or maybe sell for a good deal, I might actually be interested. But Legend of Dragoon, great RPG, really fun. I always think Harpoon whenever I see it. And then we've got, uh, just got this one not that long ago, Need for Speed High Stakes. Uh, I don't really like racing games generally, but Need for Speed kicks ass, mostly because of... Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. I've actually had this since uh, it came out. Well, since it came out, Greatest Hits. I got this brand new from a Toys... Um, KB Toys in Albany, Oregon, when there was still a KB Toys in Albany, Oregon. And, uh, yeah, I got this brand new, and I got um, Vagrant Story brand new that day. And then uh, Tenchu Stealth Assassins. Got to kind of get through these. And then, finally, the classic... Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Hell yeah, you love it. Everybody loves it. Tony Hawk Pro Skater rules. Alright, so that's it for Greatest Hits. Okay, I'm just going to show a couple random things now for my collection. Uh, I only have one PlayStation import because I really don't have a way to play a PlayStation import uh, as of yet. I am working on that, or eventually I'll work on that. And uh, that is... Uh, Samurai Deeper Kaio. And this is a badass fighting game from Bandai. And it looks sick as hell. Looks so badass. I really do want to play it, even though I'm not a fighter guy. This is, like, a reason I want to eventually be able to play imports on the PlayStation. I know there are some tricks that you can try with, like, opening the disc cover and all that, but I don't know where my original PlayStation is, and I don't ever really use it, so I'll have to try it someday, or, I don't know, I'll figure something out. And then I did also want to show off this. Probably should have showed this off first, but hey, it's my video. Who cares? 
uh, we've got my, wow, that's really bright. Hopefully it'll focus here at some point. There we go. My PS1 uh, with screen. Try to tilt this back so you can see what I'm talking about here. Pretty badass. Got your screen. And I have all the original hookups for it. I have the uh, controller. You know, everything for it. Including... the box and I'll just try to pick this up and show you there you go but uh, pretty badass I got a good deal on literally everything that is attached to the PS1 my cat's like totally gonna try to get all up in here right now but um, yeah so anyways maybe you guys just want to say hi to cheese for a little bit hey bud hey what are you doing ah never mind he doesn't want to look whatever so yep Okay, so here are the Black Label games, not giving you any clues, and uh, we're just going to start with the first one here in alphabetical order that I have. We have Akuji the Heartless. I actually just got this back, and uh, yeah, fairly fun game. And then we've got the first Alundra. This is complete and in really good shape, and it does have the map in super good shape, so that's actually really cool. Always happy to own something like that. It's always hard to find games with like the manual and map if it has a map. But yeah, I got Alundra in a really cool bundle along with some other games that were in perfect condition. Alundra 2, this one's not in the greatest condition. I don't think this one has a manual. This one's not in great shape at all. <laughs> happy to own it. Ark the Lad collection and it's all busted in here. And uh, it's actually ripped. It does not have the outer box. Uh, I can't even remember. I don't think... Yeah, it doesn't have any kind of manual or anything. The discs pop out every once in a while. I mean, it's really pretty rough, but it works. And it's pretty cool because there's, like, what, three or four games in one. And, uh, yeah, in perfect condition, that's a really expensive game. I am on the hunt for a new one. Or not new, but you know what I mean. A really good condition one that's boxed and everything. Uh, Area 51, one of the only... Well, no, I guess I've beaten... Ah, Cheese is stepping on my games. Um, and if you don't know what Cheese is, Cheese is my cat. Um, Area 51 is one of the few arcade games that I've beaten. Along with, like, Turtles 2. Or, I guess, Turtles the arcade game. Beyond the Beyond. Uh, pretty good RPG, though very grind-heavy and very... Um, you get into a lot of random encounters, so if you're not in random encounters, do not play that game. Blast Radius, I got this fairly recently, and I got it because the cover kicks ass, and because it says it's from the company that brought you Colony Wars, a game that is not really something that I normally like, but I do like Colony Wars. I mean, Blast Radius I haven't tried yet, but uh, it looks cool. Okay, I could talk about this one all day long, but... Uh, trying not to make this video very long, Blazing Dragons is a hidden gem. This is the definition of a hidden gem. I've beaten this game multiple times, uh, two times I think, maybe three, but definitely played it more than two or three times, and uh, yeah, I mean, look at the voice cast, it's pretty awesome. This is a point-and-click adventure. Uh, this is like the old PC games, you know, like Kyrandia or uh, King's Quest or any of those kinds of games. And it is really, really fun. A lot of humor in it. Very cool game. Highly underrated. Breath of Fire 3, classic. Uh, great RPG. This one's in, like, mint condition. I've had this for a very long time. I just completed this recently and was very happy about it. Breath of Fire 4. And, uh, yeah, it's in great shape, so fuck yeah. And then, definitely, definitely, uh, I mean, this is basically my favorite PlayStation game of all time, and literally one of my top three games ever, ever, ever. You, on one day, you might ask, it might be my favorite game of all time. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, uh, black label copy, finally got one just recently. I had a greatest hits copy, and then I had a disc-only black label copy for years. And, uh, yes, I finally own this black label. Hell yeah. I was just talking about this. Colony Wars. Uh, great game. Cheap game. Really fun. It's one of those like third-person perspective uh, flying and shoot shit downs kind of games. All sci-fi. Crash Team Racing. Also got this fairly recently at a garage sale for like 50 cents. And uh, I was going to sell or trade this, and then I played it. 
and it's fun as shit. So yeah, keeping this. Oh man, I've had this game for so long. This is one of the first games I ever bought. Darkstone for PlayStation. It's just a cheesy RPG that looks really old. It it is old. It's like probably one of the first PlayStation games ever made. And then we've got Dragon Warrior 7. Oh man, I really love this game, but it's super, super long. And when I mean super long, I mean way over 100 hours. Some people say 150 hours. I've gotten about halfway through this game. The beginning is super slow. I've yet to play the uh, DS version, but um, or 3DS version, but I intend to at some point get that and try it because I heard that they actually cut down the beginning part because, man... Two to three hours of it with no combat in the beginning is pretty tedious and weird for an RPG. So anyways, that's the first stack. Okay guys, we're off to the next game, and that is going to be Eternal Eyes. A really fun, if simple and stripped down, tactical RPG that uh, I actually really enjoy. I actually plan on beating this game at some point. In fact, you know what? Looking at this, I'm getting inspired. I actually might have to beat this sometime soon. Uh, one thing I learned from my last little segment was I should put these games upside down so they're easier to put back in order, in alphabetical order, uh, the way it, the way they were in the first place. Okay, so next we have the classic. One of the greatest games of all time, in my opinion. I know a lot of people hate on this game, but um, I'm not really sure why. Final Fantasy VII has not aged well, but for what it was back then, this was a classic and great great game i remember watching my friends play this when we were teenagers and just having to own my own copy and then when i was like 18 i got playstation and my own copy way later than everybody else and got to play it but uh i really loved it i had a really good time and then the next game we've got is final fantasy 8 and uh this game i could not get into as much as 7 and uh, that's probably because of the complicated magic system, but I need to get back to it. I need to give it a try anyways, because I did actually like it a bit. Uh, the music's really cool for damn sure. Okay, and then next we have, obviously, Final Fantasy IX. This is actually one of my favorite games, like, ever. Probably uh, top 10, maybe top 15 games of all time. Really, really fun game. Awesome music. Just back to Final Fantasy roots with the... Uh, Slightly lighter-hearted elements, not so heavy on sci-fi and uh, brooding atmospheres. I really like the ability system. Uh, I like the way you get abilities from your items and weapons and stuff like that. Well, I, I guess I should say your weapons and armor and, like, equipable things. The way you get abilities and spells is really cool. Plus, the card game, oh my god, so freaking amazing. Uh, Tetra Master, so fun. Front Mission 3, very happy to own this. I'm a huge Front Mission fan. I beat the one on Super Famicom. And uh, this is going to be the next one I try to beat. But really cool tactical combat with mechs. And super upgradable mechs that uh, if you like item management and like upgrading things and keeping track of tons of people, then you will love that game. Cardia, the word of fate. Uh, I do not have a manual on this one, but it's the one that actually has the lighter colored uh, lettering. This was like supposedly the blockbuster exclusive uh, but no manual, but still pretty cool to own. And uh, another tactical RPG, I believe. I have not actually played this one. Or if I have, I've only played it for a few minutes. So anyways, I got that pretty cheap, so awesome. Grandia, this game is in like mint condition. Perfect condition, complete in box. Super minty. And uh, a game that I actually really like, but I have not gotten very far in. I've tried, I've like started it a couple times, and then just never really went followed through with it. But I intend on changing that. Oh yeah, Legend of Mana, one of my favorite games ever on the PlayStation. There's just something about this art style. There's something about, like, growing your own fruit and, like, the creatures and, like, I don't know. It's just freaking awesome. The way you make your own world be by placing the, you know, artifacts and stuff is just freaking amazing. I absolutely love this game, and that's another one that I need to beat. Medieval, oh my god, this is one that I've had forever. I mean, years and years. This is one of my earliest games, and I absolutely love this game. Despite the fact that this is not normally my type of game, the, like, 3D um, perspective, third-person view, hack and slash, especially for PlayStation. Uh, like, PlayStation uh, 3D platformers, for instance, or, like, N64 3D platformers, I am not into. But for some reason, Medieval just makes me happy it's a great game 
And then I got this recently, but I've yet to play it very much. Medieval 2, and this is in like mint condition. I got this from my buddy Phobia, and uh, it looks rad as hell, but I have yet to actually play it much at all. I think I just played it a few minutes, but looks rad as hell. Happy to own that for sure. Definitely a game I've played quite a bit, but I've actually never beaten, but uh, Metal Gear Solid, fuck yeah, awesome, awesome game. Just a classic, super fun, and uh, not much more to say about that. If you haven't played Metal Gear Solid, you are missing out. Go play it. Hell yeah, Nectaris, Military Madness. Uh, I don't know, there's something about this kind of game that I'm starting to get into. Even like StarCraft and and uh, like Command and & Conquer. Like I want to try to get into these kind of games. I feel like I really missed out as a teenager. I never played anything like this as a teenager, and I really like it now. Even tactical RPGs I wasn't into until recently. Ogre Battle, uh, it's funny how they say limited edition. They all say limited edition. It's not limited at all, except for how many numbers it actually came out in. Uh, no manual in this one, but I got a really good deal, and uh, something that I freaking really need to play, actually. I need to play more of these PlayStation games. They just take so long to get through. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, next deck. So, definitely one of my favorite games of all time on the PlayStation, Parasite Eve. Oh my god, I just beat this like a year or so ago, and man, it is a great, great RPG with awesome battle mechanics. I love the weapon upgrading system. It's just so much fun. Dark, brooding atmosphere. So good. So, so incredible. Uh, just definitely, definitely one of my favorites for sure. And no, I don't need to put them upside down. I need to put them right side up, but not stagger them. God, I screwed up twice. All right, so next. Definitely got a good deal on this one. Uh, Revelations Persona, the very first Persona. Definitely hard to get. This one is complete in box, if I remember correctly. Yep. And um, I got this one with the next game, which is... Persona 2. Now this one does not have manual and it does have some like wrinkling like water damage or something going on right here uh, but I don't care. I got a good deal on these. I actually got them for 80 bucks on Amazon together and that was a great deal. It was a long time ago. I've had those for quite a while and I love the original Persona. I'm not playing Persona 2 until I beat the original. Uh, Project Overkill. Underrated gem. Very cheap game. Very fun game. If you like an isometric like shooter where you just kill hordes of shit and there's fucking blood everywhere and you get lots of ammo and stuff, it's very, very fun. Very cool game. I cannot recommend Project Overkill enough, especially for the price. Oh, watch now that I said that it's gonna go up in price. Okay, so Saga Frontier. This is actually a game series that I've never really gotten into. Any of the Saga games. I need to. Um, I just there's so many games, so many RPGs. I love so many RPGs, so I need to get into this. But this one's in nice shape. Uh, this one's not in as nice shape if I remember correctly. But Saga Frontier 2. I believe there's something on the back. Oh yeah, it's like got a big fold right here. Hard to show up on camera, but yeah, anyways, uh, complete in box, blah, 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 need to play it. Okay, and then we've got Shadow Madness, really cool game, actually, very cheap, too. Last time I checked, this is an RPG um, that kind of mocks, like, other RPGs of the time, specifically, like, Final Fantasy VII, but really, really cool game, uh, something I also recommend for people looking for something a little bit different. And then we've got the uh, Cheapo Shooter, Shooter Space Shot. But this is actually really fun. I enjoy this one quite a bit. This is the one that is side-scrolling, and it's actually fairly fun. You can, like, choose between levels and stuff. Same with this one, Shooter, Starfighter Sandvane. And this one is an overhead shooter, and it is actually very fun, too. So get these as well. They're super cheap games if you don't have them. Uh, Steel Harbinger, I have not actually played this yet. I don't think I did. I just got this one not that long ago. And, uh, yeah, it looks really fun. Um, yeah, it's some kind of action, like, third-person perspective kind of thing going on. Uh, very proud to own this. Took a long time to get this Strider 2. This has uh, the original game on it, and it has Strider 2, which is fun as hell. Amazing game. I love the Strider games. Interesting fact on Strider um, is that the disc that says Strider 2 actually has Strider 1 on it, and the other one that just says Strider actually has Strider 2 on it. So very strange misprint, and, then, and they're all like that as far as I know, so pretty weird. And then we've got um, Strikers 1945. I was literally playing this last night. Mine's got this, like, fading right here, but no big deal. 
still awesome to have. Um, not too expensive right now, but I see this one getting more expensive. Badass overhead shooter. Tons of planes to select from. Tons of levels of difficulty to select from. And just a ton of fun. Just so much shooting action. So good. And then finally, from this stack, we have the original awesome Suikoden. Really badass game that I just need to finish. I've been uh, playing it here and there, and I'm quite a few hours into it, and yeah, it seems like I'm getting close to somewhere, so I need to finish this. But awesome turn-based RPG. Everybody knows about Suikoden. Alright, so, next stack. Okay, moving on. We've got definitely one of the gems in my collection, Suikoden 2. Really rad-looking game, but uh, same kind of thing with as uh, Persona 2. One of those games that I won't beat or play until I beat the original. So uh, yeah, definitely stoked about this. My copy is in super, super clean condition. I mean like flawless. And uh, yeah, the back of the disc is just as clean as the front. So pretty cool to own that for sure. And then we've got definitely a great, I was just thinking about this game actually. I need to play this again. Regular old original Tomb Raider, great game, super fun game. And let's see, Tomb Raider 3, I actually have not played this one, and uh, I have not had it for too horribly long, but definitely something I need to play. I think I got this, like, garage sailing some, or something like that, but definitely a cool game to own. And the next one, we've got another classic, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Dude, soundtracks on Tony Hawk's games are so good. And that's coming from a metalhead, but yeah, um, super fun tracks in this game. I just love... Absolutely love the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. And then definitely another gem in my collection, uh, Dragon Warrior Torneco, The Last Hope. Really freaking cool game. Dungeon crawler with uh, randomly generated dungeons and uh, part of the Dragon Warrior series in case you don't know. But yeah, really cool game. Really awesome game. Hard to find. Definitely hard to find. And then Vagrant Story. I actually got this game brand freaking new as I mentioned earlier before in the... Uh, you know, when I was showing off games, I got Vagrant Story and Need for Speed 3, brand new. And this is a really, really cool RPG with a really cool combat system. Very difficult, though. There are not many RPGs where I say they are very difficult. Uh, Vampire Hunter D, definitely a cool game. Uh, just one that I never even really knew anything about, and I really like. It seems to be kind of a dungeon crawler, just kind of combat-ish game. Uh, pretty awesome game. I don't even know what type of game you'd call that. Uh, Vanguard Bandits, definitely an awesome game. Love the shiny cover, just super cool. Wow, that actually looks really good. If I didn't have the flash on, you would not be able to see that. That looks amazing. So anyways, Vanguard Bandits, that looks really cool through the viewfinder. I don't know if it's going to look that good as the final product, but wow, it's like rainbow to hell. And uh, yeah, really freaking cool game. This one does have manual, but it does not have that Lunar like demo disc. That's actually pretty hard to find. Wild Arms, holy crap, really fun RPG, really like this. If you have not tried Wild Arms, uh, definitely get to it. If you like turn-based combat and all that, very, very good stuff if you like traditional RPG, RPGs, and uh, a game that I need to play for sure more and beat. Uh, same with Wild Arms 2, very awesome game. These two are complete in box and in very good condition. All right, stupid camera cut me off at the last second on the last game, and uh, that last game is definitely a winner, Xenogears. Uh, there are actually a couple more games I'm going to show you, but this is the last of the Black Label uh, games, and uh, definitely ending on a strong point here. We've got some epic RPG action with awesome storytelling and sci-fi mech freaking combat and just... Really cool combination of things and something that I really, really want to finish at some point. And uh, yeah, Xenogears, awesome game. But there are three more things I want to show you. Uh, all three are games and just super cool. Really happy to own these. First of all, we have Lunar, Silver Star Story, complete. And in the box and everything, this one I believe is missing the soundtrack disc. And uh, no big deal, as long as it has the game and most of the other stuff in there. It's in really nice shape. Not going to open it or anything, but definitely something I am very proud to own. So definitely a cool one. And then we have, second to last, Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete. Super awesome. Big old fat version. This one is missing something stupid, I think. Can't remember what, but it's nothing big. It's like a pendant or something. Can't really remember, but... Super happy to own this. It's in great shape, too. I mean, the outer box is a little bit dinged up, but the inside is, like, 
really, really in nice shape. So super stoked to own those. Definitely crowning achievements on my PlayStation collection. But I have to say this last item seems to be like a little more uncommon and just something that I really wanted for a super long time, even just the regular version. But to find it in lawn box is pretty crazy. And I got this through a trade uh, through Nintendo 13. Really cool channel, really cool guy. Um, and what's funny is I've actually thought about trading this before because it's not as good as a game as I thought it was going to be. When I think of point-and-click adventures, I think of Blazing Dragons, which is amazing, which I talked about earlier. But we've got Terry Pratchett's Discworld, but something you just never, ever see. Long box. It's in super good condition. I mean, not perfect or anything like that. It's definitely got the fading down the side, but uh, who cares? This is just so hard to find. But yeah, uh, point-and-click adventure. Definitely a cool, like, series. The books are cool, and the movies pretty cool, too. But yeah, complete in box. Definitely hard to find. Um, I, I would say way harder to find than the Lunar games. I've literally never seen a long, co long box copy before uh, physically until I got this copy. So definitely really cool. Man, the artwork is just so badass. If anything, I'm keeping this just for the artwork. It's just amazing. So, yeah. There you go. There's my uh, PlayStation collection. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That would be awesome. All right, guys, so that's it. There we go. Almost ended this video without tagging some people, though, and uh, getting my final thoughts out. Uh, what do you guys think of the PlayStation collection? Um, obviously, I'm an RPGer. I'm really, really into RPGs, especially, like, 16-bit and the PlayStation era of RPGs. Those are my favorites, and uh, so my collection kind of reflects that. But uh, what do you think? Leave a comment. And let me know if you've picked up any awesome PlayStation games. Uh, I'm going to tag some people to show off their PlayStation collections, but it would be really rad if just anybody that watched this wanted to make a video and show off their PlayStation collection. Uh, I'll go ahead and share it on Facebook and stuff, and uh, yeah, you can tell me when you make it and uh, share it with me. That'd be awesome. Um, but as far as people that I know I'd like to go ahead and share their PlayStation collection with me, uh, or with all of us, that would be... Oh boy, let's see. We are going to do Retro Gaming Maniac. Uh, definitely a cool guy, and he has a pretty good collection, too. I know that for sure. And then, um, it's been a really long time since we've had a video from the co-op collector, uh, so that would be really cool. Brian, if you could go ahead and show off your PlayStation collection, I know you have a pretty decent one as well. And then there is a third person I was going to tag... Uh, oh man, who is it going to... Oh yeah, Derp. The very first person I decided to tag was actually going to be the Gorilla Gamer. So, uh, Will, that'd be awesome if you can go ahead and show off your PlayStation collection. That would be rad. And then, why not? A couple bonus people. Uh, let's see. Levit the Retro Gamer. Show off your PlayStation collection if you haven't already. You may have already done that. But, uh, I know you sometimes need some material. So, uh, that'd be badass, Levit, if you could go ahead and show that off. And then also, how about... Whittle Brother, Whittle Brother kicks ass. I don't know if you're going to have time to do a video, I know you're a busy guy, but if you do, show off your PlayStation collection, give us a reason to watch your channel, because we love your channel, man. We, I love all these channels that I'm mentioning, so please, make a video, I like seeing stuff from you guys. Uh, but yeah, that'd be awesome, thank you guys very much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the collection, uh, there will be more videos with more parts of my collection coming soon. Uh, so yeah, stick around, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Go ahead and comment and let me know what you thought. Be sure to hit that bell notification because if you don't, YouTube's not going to notify you of shit. And if you want to see my videos, probably want to be notified. So, yeah, go ahead and do all that stuff. Thank you very much for watching and keep rocking the retro games.